Welcome back to the 30s flat saga. I think we finished with the floors all done and ready. Now, before I show you what happened next, I'll have to share my design ideas with you so it all kind of makes sense. My initial idea for the flat was to sort of honor the era it was built in and go the art deco route. But I knew my historical heart loves older stuff as well. And also art deco is sort of all about clean forms and my taste is far from minimalistic. So I had a feeling it's just not going to mix well. So I decided to stick to art deco when it comes to the living room and be open to different inspirations in the rest of the rooms. I had a couple of initial ideas regarding the layout of the flat. First of all, I wanted to keep the rooms serving the purpose they used to, so the bedroom would stay where the bedroom used to be and the living room would still be living room. But also I wanted to keep the walkthrough layout where the rooms are connected to each other. One of the reasons for that was to potentially build a library wall one day with like secret doors leading to the bedroom. Now tell me this isn't the best idea I ever had. <laughs> a library wall to me sounds pretty Victorian, so I thought it would make sense to make the room Victorian themed. And then for the bedroom, one thing I knew was that one day I'd like to save up money and buy an 18th century portrait for my bedroom. And because for some reason I was gravitating towards classical style furniture when it comes to bedroom ideas, it kind of made sense to make bedroom just 18th century inspired. And at that point, I realized that we have a time traveling theme going on here. I think I once had a conversation with my sister where I said, oh no, if I ever have my own place, I think every room will have to be different era because how am I going to decide? And well, fast forward to a couple of years later, <laughs> the last sort of aesthetic choices that had to be made were all the smaller rooms like the hallway, the bathroom, the tiny toilet and the kitchen. I knew I wanted my bathroom to be white and dark blue, a little like English style slash Victorian. So I thought the tiny toilet room could be art deco. And then when I lived in Scotland, I toured a couple of old houses and mansions and I was obsessed with the idea of like a copper filled historical style kitchen. So I decided to go Victorian kitchen. All I knew about the hallway is that I want a wallpaper and a big mirror and sort of leave the rest open aesthetically. And thus, I had a theme for each room and I could actually start planning what I'm going to do or what I want to do, because what I want to do and what I had to do are two different things, but let's move on. During all this renovation work, I found it nice to just sit down and relax and chill playing June's Journey, who is sponsoring today's video. June's Journey is a free to download hidden object mystery game that is set in the Roaring Twenties. The main character, June, is trying to solve a family mystery. She's trying to find out who killed her sister. And you slowly discover new pieces to the story with each new scene that you solve. There is also new settings and new locations with each scene, which are honestly just so pretty to look at and full of vintage and antique stuff. Chef's kiss. Speaking of pretty to look at, there is also a variety of different characters, some really cute historical clothes. What I like about June's Journey is that it's not only a hidden object game, there is a lot of other stuff you can do. You get to decorate your own island, you get to fill out a sticker album, you get to participate in challenges with your club. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, follow the link in the description to download June's Journey for free today. It is available on Android, it is available available on iOS, it is available on Facebook games, so I'll see you there! One thing I knew was that I want to have a fireplace, not a real one because it's not technically possible in a flat, but a refashioned old one that is actually a bio one, is that the right name? So I would also have to build a fake chimney wall that would be in the middle of the wall and over the fireplace there would be of course a mirror. And when I was looking at Art Deco living room inspirations, I noticed this trend of like symmetrically placed sconces, which I really liked. And also so many of the rooms were green. And even though I'm not usually into colored walls, I was like, 
damn i'm kind of feeling this <laughs> it's just so quintessentially art deco also at that point i realized there is a lot of original fireplace sarons on ebay and i was like you know what <laughs> i'm getting one i found the one i liked the guy offered pickup only and he was based in like some remote welsh village but i thought surely he'll be open to other options let me tell you it didn't go too well. Hi, I'm interested in your item and will be happy to arrange transport myself if that's okay with you. And then he was like, good afternoon, thank you for your message. Yes, that arrangement would be fine with me. So I was full of hope. And I wrote, fantastic, thank you. Would you mind giving me the rough measurements of the sarong so I can get an estimate? And then he gave me all of the measurements. But then he also said, there are a number of interested parties, so you may miss the item while it is listed on eBay unless, oh, sorry, you less you pay quickly. Okay, so the thing is like, I couldn't pay because for some reason, if he didn't specify how much the transport would be, I was unable to actually pay. So it's like, I bought it, but I couldn't, hacking pay for it and it wasn't my fault and then he was like i have waiting to be paid on this side i am unable to alter the side as you have said you have agreed to buy you can pay when the item is collected he really pissed me off and then he was like oh no sorry the police make payment but obviously it still didn't work so i was like still not working sorry i attached a screenshot of the message i get when i click pay now so obviously like the issue is not me and then he was like you need to cancel the transaction as others are interested as i require payment today and i to be purchased and then he cancelled the transaction so like long story short he probably saw that i'm polish and he was like she's trying to steal from me <laughs> anyway next up i knew i wanted to keep the original layout of the room so the sofa would be leaning against the kitchen wall and then on the other side of the room there would be a table and chairs and in front of a sofa on the opposite wall i wanted a short cupboard where i could keep board games and china basically and then maybe have a tv on top that was pretty much the living room planned as in i knew what pieces of furniture i'm looking for i wasn't sure about the particular styles yet but 30s art deco was already a big hint when i said 18th century earlier i didn't mean this i meant this like the subtle scandinavian style with dark furniture i think like gustavian 1780s forwards rather than rococo with bedroom i didn't debate for so long obviously i needed a bed <laughs> a wardrobe which i decided would be a good idea to have a built-in wardrobe and potentially also a vanity since i always wanted one and i had no space i wanted the wallpapers to be white and blue chins pattern and i also wanted the floor to be made of wide long floorboards sort of 18th century style and i have to say unlike the rest of the flat i actually had a very specific look in my head for the bedroom i wanted the room right next to the living room to be a sort of a working space where i could edit and sew so originally i thought it would be cool to have a desk in front of the library wall and then have some sewing space on the other side i even imagined a sewing table for some reason and i also thought maybe i could get one of those murphy beds and this could also work as a guest room when i have friends over but then i realized that because i made the bedroom bigger this room actually is not as big as i thought so you would basically walk onto the desk and also i don't sew that much anymore and when i do i don't think a whole separate space is needed to be honest when it could be used otherwise so this room is still sort of under construction but keep in mind that i was going for the victorian vibe dark wood library dark wood furniture a gallery wall with drawings and paintings and i thought it would be cool if this room was covered in yellow floral wallpaper i know yellow wallpaper bad idea <laughs> similarly to the bedroom I had a pretty clear idea of how I want the bathroom to look. I wanted pretty white tiles with a delicate dark blue pattern and that was pretty much it. I also wanted a bathtub and boy oh boy, nobody told me how difficult it is to find a bathtub with rounded edges when they're not fashionable. Like literally all the bathtubs that were the right size also had this modern sharp look to them and that would kind of ruin the idea of a vintage looking bathroom. So I spent so much time trying to find a class classic looking one and I'm glad I did. I also knew I wanted sconces on the side of the mirror and that was bathroom. <laughs> I'll be honest, I think I spent twice as much time 
<laughs> debating on the tiny toilet room. First, I fell in love with these kitsch pink and green bathrooms from the 30s. I know it sounds like I've lost my mind, but hear me out. How cool would it be to have a pink toilet? Like literally a pink sink and a pink toilet. That dream has slowly faded because A, there aren't many options when it comes to pink fixtures, especially in Poland, and B, I realized that maybe making a tiny space pink and green is not the best idea and it could be a little overwhelming. So I had to look at some other inspiration and this color theme of light green and black caught my eye, so I decided to stick to that. It's also pretty art deco, if you ask me. As I mentioned, I was really digging this Victorian kitchen look, but this is probably the room where I had to compromise the most because obviously not only is it a modern flat, which is not like a Victorian kitchen, but also it is a tiny kitchen. So despite my best efforts, I needed to fit all the modern kitchen appliances and storage into a tiny space. So I knew I can't be dreaming about like old cupboards and I have to go the Ikea route. <laughs> I had a look at some inspiration and noticed most Victorian kitchens are all about like textures such as wood, copper, black iron, white tiles. I also wanted the floor to be black stone. I knew I wanted the hallway to be covered in some sort of statement wallpaper and then I also knew I want to use a huge mirror that I was gifted from a family member, which was dark wood. I also wanted the hallway to be covered in art. Like you enter the flat and there's a lot of framed art pieces or just pretty pictures in frames. And I also had this idea where some of the framed things would be related to the area where the flat is located. So I found an original 1930s photo of the building and I thought it would be so cool to like also put it up in the hallway. And I wanted the bottom half of the wall to be covered with wide food food <laughs> wide wood paneling so now that you know the designs and the ideas let's move on to doing things i have what the what is the word i have a uh, news the i have wallpaper samples here uh, so we're gonna have a look these samples are if i remember correctly i mean all three rooms that i want to be covered in wallpaper so the bedroom the sewing studio slash library and the hello and the hallway it's not a hallway the sort of like an entrance kitty hello hi hi boy do you want to see the samples kitty can i open it with one hand while you're standing on it i don't think so this is a website by the way uh they had a lot of really nice designs so okay so that will be the bedroom one it it seems a little bit wider than i thought so i'm not entirely sure but it looks nice though hmm kind of feels like a newspaper which i'm not sure it's supposed to i took this one i know it's like a hunt so not perfect but it also it's so cute that even though I wanted my entrance room, whatever you call it, to be dark, I'm like, what about this though? This is like a bedroom alternative. Oh, oh, okay. Um, too gray, I think. These two are also like hallway options. It's not a hallway, it's like tiny. Why do I keep calling it a hallway? It's like one square meter. <laughs> I really like the look of this one because it looks like it has this texture, but it actually doesn't. But it's also quite dark, so I'm not sure. And then this one for the bedroom, I wish this this wallpaper had the same shade of cream instead of white. That would be perfect. Yeah, we'll see. I just bought some lamps. Oh, almost fell. Let me show you. So... Here is where the bathroom sink is going to be and I'm debating whether to put it this way as it's supposed to be or this way so it's sort of the, the right height for my face. And I think I'm probably going to put it upside down because um, I'm a rebel. <laughs> uh, I bought some paint samples and I'm gonna try them out though I'm not sure if I should do it on, like on the actual wall but I really want to see what it looks like on the wall rather than on a piece of paper so I'm gonna try and do it behind where I'm thinking of putting the couch aka the sofa so they're not gonna be seen in case something doesn't work out <laughs> and I can't cover them so I'll, I'll try 
I'm not lying to you when I say finding the right paint for the living room was quite honestly the most difficult part of the decorating process if not like renovating this flat because I had this particular shade in mind and no paint came close like not one even those rainbow like samples that supposedly have like every shade imaginable they didn't have what I was looking for Honestly, I don't think I'm happy with any of these. They look a little bit different on camera, like the middle one is much brighter, as in it looks more mint than it does forest green on the camera. None of them ain't it. The middle one is the closest to what I want, but it's kind of dark. Uh, but I'll wait till they dry completely and we'll see what they look like. The kitchen sample, on the other hand, is kind of exactly what I'm looking for, so there is that. For the bathroom floor, I ended up choosing dark blue floors and I kind of regret that. I felt like that was the only choice I had because obviously I'm not gonna make the floors white and I already have patterned tiles on the walls. So patterned floor tiles would probably be too much, but I kind of thought the floor tiles wouldn't be that matte. Then my sister came over and we tried yet another paint sample, this time the one they have to mix for you, so it's more expensive because you actually have to buy a whole can. It looked too vibrant, but I felt like I was finally headed the right direction. Now, at that point, I realized I will never find the floral yellow wallpaper that I have in my head. It doesn't exist. So I was leaning towards just painting the walls yellow, but didn't know what shade. And then we sort of had this epiphany. No, a tak się utapionowo. Hmm. Hmm. Here's a chandelier that I got super cheap at an antique store in Tarnów and also a standing light that I got in that very same store that I thought would look nice in a bedroom window. Then after much deliberation, because planning the kitchen layout took us literally half of this year, um, we finally decided to order the IKEA kitchen. Obok szafka. And the whole process was confusing AF and the design tool kept telling us we need pieces that we actually didn't need or were too narrow for the cupboards that we chose. So instead we had to manually put everything one by one into cart, which was super annoying. So three out of 10. Check it out. I was already on my way out and I just grabbed it because I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it a, a go because it's so cheap. And it's a match. It's what I wanted. It's exactly the shade I was looking for. And like, I didn't even know. Like, I'm actually excited about this. I was so close to just getting wallpaper because I couldn't find a uh, shade that I like. I wonder what it looks like in the sunlight though. I tried one more shade of green from the mixing palette and I thought, you know what, I think this is as close as I'm going to get, so I'll stick with this one. I then spent my first night in the flat and I had my little mouse moment with a pepperoni pizza. I don't think you all understand how much joy the door brings me. They were kind of off after they got painted because there was this tiny thing that locks them in place and that wasn't working so i just used some hammer to unlock it and now it's working and honestly this is like the prime feature of this flat <laughs> no because i am obsessed i am i am obsessed because I used pantry doors for the toilet, I didn't have any sort of closing. So I tried cleaning these old closures by soaking them in vinegar overnight. And it actually worked so well. Oh my God, it worked so well. Look at these. This one is a bit worse, but this, oh my God. It looks like I just got this from a blacksmith. It's so good. The lamp that used to be in the kitchen sort of fit the color palette I had in mind for the bathroom, so I kept it, but it was covered in the nastiest kind of grease I've ever seen. It was so thick. I actually wasn't sure if it's possible to get it off, but because I like watching Auri Katarina, I sprayed the lamp with some washing liquid and I covered it in classic wrap and I left it to soak overnight. And oh my God, it actually did work. Okay, so I was like, oh, these door handles might use a little wash, 
but I started scrubbing them and I was like, oh no, the gold plating is coming off. So it turns out that wasn't gold plating, that was actual dirt, because this is what it looks like after. Like you couldn't even tell there is numbers on those before. I mean, literally a completely different piece. <laughs> So I needed a couple of things in the toilet, such as a towel hanger or a hanging soap dish. But I was a little afraid of drilling through the tiles. But I watched a couple of tutorials and I thought with the right kind of drill, I should be okay. So I just went for it. First, I marked the drilling spots with my eyeliner because I didn't have a marker. And then I made a tiny scratch using my screw and a hammer. And then I just went for it very carefully. And it wasn't perfect. It wasn't super even, but I managed to make it look okay. So I personally think it's a success. Check that out. Check that out. I got another sample for hallway wallpaper and oh my god, this was it. Not only was it so pretty, but also it had those tiny beads that made the whole thing shimmer. And it's a shame my hallway isn't sunny because it will look even more glorious with sun like reflecting in it. And it was so expensive but i decided to go for it and buy a single roll because the bad mathematician in me thought it's going to be enough so and also on the website it was called carolina which i decided is a sign i should get it so i did get it <laughs> check this out i constructed a device that is supposed to help me find the edge of where i want to paint and where i want to leave the white ceiling it's probably called something professionally but i don't know so the problem is my ceiling is round like the edge is kind of rounded so my dad came up with this idea to sort of help me draw the edge let's try <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it works. <laughs> is also a good moment to show off the kitchen floor. I really like this design where square tiles are chopped off at the corners and tiny white tiles are inserted and a lot of old kitchens had this design but in white and I thought white kitchen floor might be too optimistic. Currently sitting on an inflatable mattress. I just spent the day painting the kitchen and I didn't really get much done. Like I only got one layer of paint and I'm exhausted it was so hot i didn't really think through that it's summer it's a sunny kitchen and i don't have any curtains which may have not been the best idea also when i'm on the ladder it's like 30 times hotter up there so i also did not take that into account so yeah tomorrow morning the kitchen delivery is supposed to come and also the floor edges i don't i honestly have no idea how these things are called in english because i never had to use these words so yeah i'm waiting for that and hopefully it will arrive as it was said on friday and now i need to uh get that lipstick off so see ya <laughs> so the ikea kitchen is here This all needs to be sort of assembled. I don't even know where to start. I don't actually even know if I should start because I'm still painting and we're supposed to paint. There is no space to paint because it's all laying around. So what I do? Then finally, it was time. My friends came over to help and we started painting the living room green and something strange started happening. The more of the green paint appeared on the wall, the more it was completely changing color and like not in a good way, but in a, oh, super vibrant. This looks a little bit like a hospital way and I was panicking, but it was too late to back out. So I just kept repeating to myself that no, it looks good, it looks good. So we went on and we also painted the other room 
yellow, which I forgot to shoot. And let me tell you, the yellow paint was the worst paint ever. It took like five layers to cover white walls properly. Then we enjoyed a short break by the river. And then the next day, we were mostly done with painting. Now, fast forward a couple of weeks later, I just landed from New York and I was too jet lagged to sleep. So I decided to fix some of the places where the yellow paint still didn't look right after five layers. Could be my jet lag speaking, but like I'm beginning to dig this color. I think it, it worked out actually nicely. Or maybe that's because it's sunny now, but like I actually like it. It's okay. Oh my God. You can tell I just flew in like 7,000 kilometers. For one of the kitchen walls, I had this idea where I would frame different book covers of 1930s Polish cookbooks and housekeeping books, which I found at a digital archive. I got the frames super cheaply at Flying Tiger. And overall, I'm quite pleased with the result. This is such an easy way to decorate a kitchen space. Then while I was in the UK, I picked up some wall lamps that I ordered to my friend's address. So thank you very much. And I just brought them in my suitcase, as you do. And my dad fixed the wiring and they looked glorious. Um, here is the current state of things. Sorry, I, I was eating a cookie. And here is some stuff. Here is the rest of the kitchen. Here is the hallway mirror. Here is the <laughs> bedroom floor. And then this is the hallway wall uh, decor. I don't know the name. And then there is some leftovers there that I need to sell. <laughs> And yeah, that is, um, here is a half done kitchen um, and a box of cardboard that I need to dispose of, so. Dad came over to get the bedroom floor done. We decided not to get it done by floor people because we've done a floor like that together at our countryside cottage and I really liked the handmade result of it. While he was working on it, I was gluing the ready-made wood paneling to the hallway wall. And in the meantime, my dad did a walls concert reveal. Yo. Then some more wood paneling. My dad also installed the bedroom light in the meantime because he's a licensed electrician, so that's very handy. And I did a wallpaper test. Okay, but this wallpaper is literally so pretty that I almost cried. I'm not even kidding you. Like, I just looked at it and I literally teared up. <laughs> it's so nice. Okay, hear me out. This is temporary. The the cupboard is temporary, but this is bloody nice. This is really nice, right? Back from a very uneventful Trip to Ikea. Uh, I was supposed to get a mattress uh, but I couldn't find it <laughs> and I was also supposed to get a mirror that wasn't there so I'm gonna have to order that online and meanwhile I'm gonna go and get some stuff to finish off the floor in the bedroom and yeah that's the plan for today to finish off the floor in the bedroom so it's ready for when my beautiful bed arrives which I ordered yesterday night and I also think I sorted the sofa situation because Basically, people that I bought the sofa from refused to carry it into my flat. Like they said, they can sort the delivery for me. They can get someone to get it to my flat, but uh, they're not gonna carry it in. And I was like, it's 125 kilos. Like, how am I going to get it inside? I had to sort out my own transport and um, luckily they're free tomorrow. So the sofa should be there tomorrow which means it's the end of my inflatable mattress era, which is exciting. So yeah, that's the news. <laughs> When my dad was done installing the floorboards, they needed some proper sanding and polishing. What is up? My hair is wet, not dirty, so chill. Anyway, here is the, here is the paint I'm gonna use and it looks <laughs> literally looks like yogurt it's it's yogurt i'm gonna paint my floor with yogurt 
Then I covered it with two layers of white polish. Bad news. I left a package of my snacks on the windowsill. <laughs> Hi, welcome to unboxing, where I unbox a box in front of a pile of boxes. <laughs> anyway, not gonna lie, it was expensive. Like, it was more expensive than what I had in mind for a coat hanger. But you know what? I was looking for coat hangers and it was either this or like a wooden one that I didn't like that much, but it could do in terms of like the size. And I thought to myself, what would I rather look at every single time I hang a coat on it. And then um, the choice was simple. I like beautiful things, sue me. And you know what? No regrets. Because now every time I'm gonna get back home, it's gonna make me happy. So, you know what will also make me happy? If this knife could work. Let me in. Okay, hear me out. I mean, it is so cute. So originally I wanted to find an old, preferably 1930s sofa, but I really wanted the sofa to be fold out so I have additional sleeping space and it is very rare for old sofas to do that. Like practically none of the old ones that I've seen have that option. So after a while I gave up and I realized I will have to get a modern sofa. So I found the one I liked and I found the fabric I really loved. And I was a bit worried about the color because it was sort of close to the walls but like not close enough to to be a good match but i just went for it and after a couple of weeks the baby was finally home i just realized like it's giving hospital <laughs> i think i need to change the paint <laughs> i need to paint all this again Oh. Okay, tell me I have not been bamboozled. This is the shade that I was going for and it looks pretty much what it looked like in the shop and on this sample. And then this is what I got. Like... That's like five shades darker. I finally mastered the courage to get some wallpaper done and not gonna lie, I made a lot of mistakes, one of which you can actually see in the video and I wonder if you pick up on it. I also only recorded the beginning because I was so stressed out, I would mess it up. Then I eventually gave in and after some consultation with my friends, I repainted the living room again. So the current state of things is as follows. Um, this wall is pink. These are a new shade of green that I think works slightly better, though it's still not exactly what I had in mind, but you know what? It'll do for now instead of driving me crazy. The sofa's here, uh, which is amazing. It looks really nice. And that's the reason I painted the background pink. I mean, self-explanatory, king of jazz vibes. N next up. The kitchen is untouched. The bathroom has a sink, but it doesn't have a mirror. This room is empty because there is no inflatable mattress, so it is kind of a storage room right now. Here is the layout for the kitchen uh, decoration, but I'm still waiting for like two more pieces, so I'm not hanging it on the wall yet, but... Here is what it looks like so far. Here is a door that needs cutting because it's uh, not made for the new floor. This room has new floors that are painted white and there is a bed. There is a bed. I have a bed. <laughs> it doesn't have a mattress yet, so I'm not sleeping on it, but there is a bed. Isn't it nice? And then the hallway, it's not a hallway, it's too small. That's what it looks like currently. Um, this is the mirror. This is the wallpaper. Uh, and that's, that's how much wallpaper I managed to squeeze out of that one roll. 
Um, and then here's the hanger. Isn't it nice? Uh, this is gonna be covered in wallpaper as well, so it's gonna look uh, much better. I mean, I'm pretty pleased. Well, that's it for now. <laughs> Next up, see me actually get some living room furniture. The kitchen gets done. Me cooking my first breakfast. Toilet reveal. And much more. See you guys. Uh, by the way, don't forget to download Juice Journey for free using the link in the description. <laughs> See ya!